The beginnings of Protestant Christianity in Korea can be traced centuries back. Dutch seamen made the first Protestant Christian contact with Korea in the 17th century. In 1628, three sailors, all members of the Dutch Reformed Church, were stranded in Korea by a storm, and they made the country their home. Two of the three later died while fighting on the side of the Koreans against invading Manchu soldiers. The survivor, John Jans Waltevre or Pakyon as he was called in Korea, married a Korean woman. He served as a military trainer in Korea and was well accepted by the people. In 1653, there was another shipwreck involving the Dutch ship Sparrow Hawk which landed on Jeju Island in southern Korea. Of the 64 crew men, 28 drowned and the 36 survivors were captured by island authorities and sent to Seoul and other places in southwestern Korea. In 1666, eight of the captives were able to escape after a 14-year imprisonment. Since a small number of Dutch sailors lived in Korea for many years, it is reasonable to suppose that some first exposure to Protestant Christianity was made via these men. There is no documentary evidence of any conversions from these contacts, however. Yet, if other sailors had a strong faith, as that revealed in the account of the shipwreck, imprisonment, and life in Korea of Hendrik Hamel, bookkeeper of the Dutch vessel Sparrow Hawk, then it is likely that Koreans took note of Christianity. Aside from these unexpected visitors from shipwrecked vessels, there was little contact with Protestant churches until the 19th century. One significant contact early on by Protestants was made by the Reverend Friedrich August Karl Veslav. Veslav came to Korea in 1832 as an interpreter for the British ship Lord Amherst, which had been sent to open trade relations with Korea. Kutzlaff was trained at the famous center of pietism in Hale, Germany, and sent to Thailand in 1828 as a missionary for the Netherlands Missionary Society. Kutzlaff's main contributions were in the distribution of Christian literature. In later years, Gutzlaff went to Macau and explored the Chinese coast Lu Chu Islands and other places with an interest in starting new missions. On July 17, 1832, Gutzlaff wrote in his journal. A stiff breeze brought us inside of Korea. A merciful providence has protected us through many dangers along the coast of China, and oh, that we were truly grateful. The Lord Amherst arrived at an island near Huanghe province in central Korea, and the British sent a letter via local officials to the royal court in Seoul. The effort failed to elicit any response, so the ship sailed south and anchored in Basils Bay in Chungcheong province. Again, a petition was sent along with gifts for the king in the hope of establishing a commercial trade agreement. While waiting for an answer, Gutzlaff had the chance to make contact with the local people. Before sailing to Korea, he had obtained the Chinese scriptures from Robert Morrison, the first Protestant missionary to China. Gutzlaff distributed these and other tracts to the people and undoubtedly tried to witness personally to them. But his stay in Korea was too short to leave much impression. The mission of the Lord Amherst to open Korea for trade failed, and as a result, Gutzlaff had to leave after only one month. He left Korea saying, in the great land of eternal God, there will be a time of merciful visitation for him. 
while we look for this we ought to be very anxious to hasten its approach by diffusing the glorious doctrine of the cross by all means in our heart. The scripture teaches us to believe that God can bless even these feeble beginnings. Let us hope that better days will soon dawn for Korea. 33 years after Yugoslav's visit, in 1866, a Scottish missionary, Robert J. Thomas, went to Korea. Thomas was sent as a missionary to China by the London Missionary Society. He and his wife left Scotland in July 1865, arriving at Shanghai soon after this time. Shanghai's climate proved to be warm for Mrs. Thomas. So Thomas journeyed to Hong Kong seeking cooler conditions, but while he was gone, his wife died. After her funeral, Thomas went to Chefu, China, and there met two Roman Catholic Koreans at the home of the Reverend Alexander Williamson of the National Bible Society of Scotland. Thomas then decided to go to Korea with this man. Williamson provided copies of the scriptures, tracts, and expenses for the journey, and Thomas was on his way, arriving in Wanghe province in September 1865. In December 1865, Thomas returned briefly to China for a visit. Early in 1866, he sought transportation for the return to Korea. When he heard about the upcoming departure of the American schooner General Sherman to open trade relations between Korea and the United States, he applied for passage and subsequently was offered a free trip if he would serve as an interpreter. Thomas accepted and the ship arrived in Korea in August 1866. The General Sherman entered the Taedong River and proceeded toward Pyongyang, today's North Korean capital. While they were en route, the governor of Pyongyang province sent to inquire about the nature of the ship's visit. When he was informed of its mission, the governor notified them that it was impossible to open trade relations at that time. He asked the Americans to live, but they did not. To the eyes of the Koreans, this was an invasion and intrusion of foreigners, yet the ship continued, taking advantage of heavy rains and high tides until it became stuck in the mud. Soon after, the ship was attacked and burned by the Koreans. The entire crew was killed. Since no crew member survived, the historical account of the General Sherman's faith is incomplete except for the version of missionary Harry Rhodes. Missionary Thomas was also killed in this fatal incident. Still, Protestant Christian witness to Koreans began to increase. In 1867, the year following Robert Thomas's death, Alexander Williamson who had given Thomas Bibles when he first visited Korea, journeyed to the northeastern part of China, near the Korea-China border. On this trip, he visited the Korea Gate and sold Christian books to Korean merchants who were doing business in the border area. From 1873 on, John Ross and his brother-in-law, John McIntyre, both Scottish Presbyterian missionaries preached the gospel to Korean residents in the China-Korea border region. In 1876, McIntyre baptized his first Korean converts. In 1881, Ross baptized 85 Koreans in the northern valleys of Manchuria. And in 1884, he baptized several more. With the help 
of Korean merchants in Manchuria, Ross and McIntyre translated the Gospel of Luke and the first portions of his translation of the New Testament were printed and circulated. And five years later, they translated the entire New Testament into Korean year 1887. Among the Korean language teachers was So Sung Yoon, an itinerant medicine merchant who frequently visited the northeastern region of China. On one of these trips, he became ill and was cared for by McIntyre. His concern moved So Sung Yoon to assist the missionaries in their translation of the New Testament. During the course of their work, So Sung Yoon and his brother So Kyung Yoon were converted. After completion of the New Testament, the two brothers returned to their home in Weiju but found themselves no longer welcome. They were moved to Sore on the west coast of Wanghe province. There, the two established a Presbyterian church and So Kyung Yoon became one of the first Protestant Korean ordained ministers. Thus, the work of Ross and McIntyre in Northeast China lay the foundation for Protestantism in Korea. Koreans who were converted in China took back to their homeland Protestantism, a movement which was to have quite an impact on Korean politics. This significant impact of Christianity was to be felt after the opening of Korea which ended Korea's politics of isolationism. <laughs>